Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, good morning, uh, good evening, whatever time you're able to assess this. I hope you are doing well. It's always a pleasure to interact with you. Uh, this is a very quick point of information for my field 304 students. I'm referring to my social and political mm -hmm. philosophy students. I know on the site, we, uh, on the channel, you may have a um, element of formal logic, and then there are some UGRC courses as well. But the target group for this video is my level 300 philosophy class, specifically field 304. And these are some few preliminary comments for you before we meet God willing on Monday, 3.30 at our stipulated venue for main campus. And then for city campus, currently we have two slots that we are going to settle on. One on a Tuesday morning, 7.50 a.m. <laughs> and then the other one is at 6.30 p.m. on a Wednesday. I mean, I, I told the, the administrator that, that that looks like a morning devotion and, a, and an all night kind of slots. And we would want to see if it will work. And so uh, we will settle on that. And then I'll communicate Vasaka to the class. I, I just wanted us to save some good time. You know, we are going to do our, uh, our six weeks. And that will mean that we would have to adopt positive strategies that will help us make the best of the available time we have. That, that six weeks, you know, and still, you know, engage the content proper so you can see that you have really had some have some uh, what you've really had some tutelage in field 304 the point then is we will not compromise on the content or the quality of delivery but we are minded that um, six weeks is not the same as 12 weeks even if we meet twice a week the, the stress and all from all the other courses will come in, but you would have to also psych yourselves so that we don't shortchange you by just covering some few topics. And then you are social and political philosopher, but not too, you know, endowed, so to speak, <laughs> the content that you should have covered. Okay, so what? So this is your course outline. I'm sure we'll talk about uh, the content and the dates that we, and the meeting schedules and all that as we go through it quickly, so that this will be off our discussions when we come to class, the class discussion immediately go on to content and then, uh, and then delivery proper rather than using some good quality time to discuss course outline. This will be accessible to you always till I pull it down. Okay, so you can share. When I finish, I'll give the link. We will be using some of the, you should download. I think if you are, you are a Google person, then you will have the Jamboard. If you don't, you just go to the nine dotted something up there on your Google page you, you, and look for charm board. And, and so we can be using that to do our feedbacking, the prompt one, even doing live sessions if we are doing online. Okay. For now, let's go to the course outline. So the course is, but, uh, I'm sure by level 300, you know all this. I don't have to remind you of which department, which school with college uh, this course belongs to. So we can move quickly. We want to be minded not to use PHCL, you see, 304 when you are registering. This is a fail because it's purely philosophy. It's not a blend of philosophy and classics. We don't have such blends again in our third years and fourth years. Department okay, so you either have fail, so then it means you are doing philosophy, or you have a class, BLAS, and there will be a classics course. So, where you still see those old course codes that read PHCL 304, you register into that, you have done, you haven't registered into this course, and you may have challenges. Okay, I've seen a notice, and I'm sure you would have seen it by now if you haven't go to your UG. Email. There's been a communication from the provinces of his academic affairs, of course, prompting the most 300 and 400 to indicate clearly by signing uh, signing up for whether they are minoring, majoring, or combining. And 
since I also play the role of exams officer, let me use the opportunity quickly to achieve this aim. If at this level you still do not know what goes into minor, majoring, or combining in the Department of Philosophy and Classics, then you are not helping yourself. A minor student, minor student, needs to take at least one core, at least means it could be more, based on whether you have read the maximum or not per semester. You see, you are not supposed to exceed 18 credits per semester, it is between 15 and 18. So when we have three credits throughout, you should take at most per semester uh, six credits, six courses, because each will count for three. So three, 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 six will be 18. That's the maximum you can take per semester. You can't exceed that according to the investors revised rules that we are currently working with, okay? The minimum is 15. So that is the, the, the framework within which you do your selection. And if you are majoring, then after all your picks, you should have at least 15, at most 18. How should you pick? I'm talking about single major. You should pick at level 300, which is the class I'm addressing now. Level 300, if you are doing a single major, it means that you, uh, you would be picking more, uh, what is it, more courses from philosophy than the other. So at level 300, you don't get to decide that you are doing a single major, but you, you select two cores and at least one uh, elective, two core subjects and at least one elective. If you want to do a single major there, then it is two core subjects, two electives at least. Okay, so you will pick two core courses, two elective courses. That will make 12 because each is three. So three times four will be 12. You see that you haven't reached the, mark, the, the minimum that you need per semester. This is now 12. So the other department where you tend to minor will give you the addition to top up. So you either pick one from there or two from there. Maybe if you pick two from there, per their prescription for minoring students for that department. Even if, if you pick that one day and add to the 12, it will be 15. If you picked two, they required you to do, say, a core and an elective pair as a minor student. You still add those six. You won't exceed maximum per semester. Okay. But the, the point of focus is if you are majoring, you should have picked two core subjects, per semester, excuse me, two core subjects, two electives per semester. You can pick more. If you pick more, it means the other department will, will not be accommodated. You see. The, the investor doesn't want you to do that. Then the one who is combined and combined major will do two core subjects and one elective. That is three. So the person will pick three from here, but not any three. You have to pick in a certain way. Otherwise, you can't graduate. <laughs> we will suspend your graduation, unfortunately. Some have gone through that. Okay. Then a minoring student will just pick a core at least. Listen to what I'm saying, at least, because it's always in reference to the whole that you need to have covered per semester. So if you pick just a core, and it turns out that the other department's demands of you also didn't give you the 12 that you need to add to the one to make 15, then you can't get it because you will not have enough credits. So we often advise that even though we don't require of you necessarily to go beyond one core as a minor student, it is advisable to, even as a minor student, pick one or one elective, so that if it turns out that your other department where you are majoring also doesn't make too much demands of you, so all you do is about nine credits, you still have the six here to get the minimum. Or if you got, God forbid, a grade that you don't like an E, for example, you can still pass with it, but then so many E's can undermine your grade. So simply put, all these are already in your handbook. They are well elaborated. I've done some videos earlier on to help students and don't need to assess it. But now, there's communication from academic affairs. I just read it before starting this video, which tells you that it's a major concern for the university in graduating a student. When the person comes, I was minoring. Meanwhile, you have done majoring combinations, or I was combined, while you are short of some credit, and so on and so forth. So I'm helping you out here. This is field 304. Do not go and register for. PHCL 304 is a different course. You can tell the title is different. All right. Now, for venue, main campus, we are settled on it. 
This is for in person, so take note. We meet on Monday at 3.30 to 5.20 at N3. N3, I, I even had in mind to you and block three. You know, this N3, N block, the third one. Then there is a second slot, which is also required, except that we do it online. Online because of the six weeks, we can't always meet in person. It would be a real, real tool on the student. You see. Mm -hmm. So I address an online session, which I hope to make it as asynchronous as possible, but it is in your interest if you can make it to the live session to be there. We'll record it and share so that you can bring your questions anyway. Then we can clarify. So that's for in-person and for main campus. For city campus, I already mentioned you have two slots, just like main campus. I said the main campus second slot is arranged as a class. City campus is a bit tricky. We're giving two slots beautifully done, but one is 750 to 9.50 a.m. on a Tuesday, which I'm sure you know by now. Morning devotion. The plan, as I have it now, is to use that slot uh, as our in-person one. And then the, the other one, which is on Wednesday, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. I'll go to church, folks. <laughs> I'll go to church. Anyway, so we, we will talk about it as a class. Presumably, I'll send a, a Zoom link to City Camp. I've not seen any students on the uh, Sakai yet. So apparently, people may be registering for, for, for this is a call. If you are doing philosophy, you will have to do it. So I suppose students are still finding their way to getting registered. And as soon as I have a couple of students, I hope in this, I will engage you by a quick Zoom link that I'll send. So we agree on a workable time for us at City Camp for the impact. For the online, we are fixed on our Wednesday, 6.30 to 8.30, okay? So that clarifies, I think my details, you're already aware of them. So we will move. What is, uh, and, and when we are settled on teaching assistant, they, all these will come from, I mean, they are external to us. So when we get notification on that, I will update the course of life on Sakai. So you know who your TAs are, there are any. The course description social and political philosophy. It's a bit more accessible than normally the metaphysical or you know, the analytic, typically analytic philosophy. So I, I suppose that students will find this course a little bit more, uh, less engaging in, in comparative terms with the others. Okay, course description. I said this course examines a range of philosophical views about the nature and constitution of human society. In the most appropriate ways of organizing it. What is human society and how, what is the best way of organizing society? See, we have already started raising normative questions, ethical questions. It begins with the question of the legitimacy of the state. That's where we will start. Is the state a legitimate entity? I have an issue with my own uh, neighbor, or if you like, daughter. An uncle be raised the daughter. Uh, the means I, I should say, right? And then when it, it goes to court, they say the state versus a Jah ferry. But a Jah ferry didn't rape the state. So maybe the lady even says, it's okay. The family says, it's fine. We'll go and settle it out. They say, no, this is not about you, a Jah ferry, and your niece, a grandmother. This is the state versus a Jah ferry. What is the state and what legitimacy does that state have to de determine what happens in the, uh, you know, the disbursement of my, my son-in-law's property when he passed away and he dies interested. So the state has confiscated. Confiscated what? What is the legitimacy of the state? What is the state? We see, in the, we see the state. We we'll explore that question. Is it the political issue is a social matter? Which authority does the state wield? And where does the state get that legitimacy? Those are the questions. How justified is the state? Or what is the justification for the claims made in the name of the state? That's one. We are going to ask, should we obey the state regardless? And if not, 
the alternative question is, is there room for civil disobedience? And I use that in quote because I'm quoting uh, someone. Can we have that which we call civil disobedience? A civilian disobeying intentionally, so to speak. Are there grounds for that? Okay, so we will look at some authors for that. The course will further engage an examination of arguments put forward from various perspectives in defense of a presumed relation that necessarily exists between the individual. Good. So these are all supposed to be put in CY in due course. The supposed relation that exists between the individual and the community within which she lives. So we cannot talk about this in Ghana recent times without referring to uh, the recent. Uh, if you like bantam between one renowned secondary school and then a certain group of students who have gained admission, so to speak. But the argument is that because of their religious persuasion and the demands it makes on them, keeping their hair in a certain way, the school cannot admit them. So now the debate is, is it possible for the school to reject students who are entitled to admission as a human right, so to speak, and the school's right to protect its integrity, its cultural, or if you like, its setting. I don't want to give any indications of how we want to interrogate that. That's what we as philosophers would do and engage that. But it is, a, it is a typical instance of practical application of conflict. Communality, with a community versus supposed individual debate. Is it the right of the individual over and above the right of the collective or cultural rights, actually, or even like religious rights or the school's right? Is it really ultimately the defense for individual rights? Or can, they, can we have such rights, supposedly individual, detached from communality? Could it be that the school is also protecting the rights, so to speak, of members of its community? Or that in trying to reject the student based on the rules that pertain in the school, you know, has, has the school rather defended its communal community from the imposition of individuality? This is, this is a real issue that we can't sweep under the carpet. And it, I think it might serve as a good ground to engage a social issue from now. So we will look at that. Let me just ask you something for you to reflect on before we enter into our first session. I have a right to my shop. It is my shop. I'm selling goods to you, yes, but it is my shop. But you have a right to be served right when you enter the shop. However, can you enter my shop and determine how you want to buy the thing, where you want to stand to buy it? I may have restrictions. I may tell you, yes, you have freedom of association, you have freedom of entry, you come in and come in back. But when you enter, I could tell you that please, beyond this line, I will not allow uh, customers to come because of COVID, for example, because I have saved, I've kept my resources that are very delicate there. So this is the place that customers can, can, can wonder about. They want to purchase some. Will I be right as a customer to make a case that that is against my freedom of movement, for example? But that is my space. Well, yes, but the counter response, but you are selling. So it is a question, even in business, determining whether there is any relation, of course, there will be between the individual, so to speak, and the community. Community it could be church, could be business setting, what have you. We need to engage that. Before long, people will say, well, in our community, church community, it is okay to bury the baby alive if it is the first child, so that it can pacify the gods. And that will be the community making a demand on individuality. So I am in supposedly a community and the rights of the community may override 
At another time, I may say, I am an individual, I have my right and I have my choices. So I decide to eat human flesh. I have freedom, expression. I decide what I want to say at what time. I decide to become good and good, a monkey, change my face into a monkey, God forbid that. <laughs> Have you forgotten that your children also have a right to their mother? Which you are. So we have real issues that we would want to engage in. A pessimist, a pessimism paper, I have, I have already sent you a link for that, should already intrigue you to read around that to see the dimensions of the discussion. We, we did this with the level 100 at their level. We are going to engage a bit deeper level 300 to solicit your views. Okay, so the point is self-sufficient individuals are human beings, atomic self-sufficient individuals, so to speak, or rather they are community created beings whose very essence is inextricably uh, tied to community. Are we so embedded in community that we couldn't think outside of our communal setting? That, that is problematic. That we couldn't even have done self-examination didn't change, couldn't do something different from what our community made us to be. But that is not the norm. People change. They were born into the community, but they're able to look at some things that don't work and, and improve upon it. So it couldn't be that we are so essentially stuck to the community, so much so that we are unable to make improvement. It couldn't be. But are we also so detached? I am my father's daughter. I don't choose it. I am it. So, so there seems to be some overlap that has to be opened out and clarified. Could it be in the language? Could there be a challenge rising the way we refer to the entity called the human person? We look at, so then we look at Taylor's paper and then Miles's response. We look at all of them. I've looked for a paper that sums all those uh, readings together in one text. So you read it and then you can easily refer to all the references in that text to give you a good, good understanding of the content. You will really need to read before you can. It's a reading, it's a red box, so to speak. It's not too analytic or logic, but you have to read. If you haven't read, then the discussions will not be made. Okay, then the third one, still on the description, what the content will cover. It also provides a general a reasonably detailed discussion and analysis of some socio-political systems aimed at ensuring certain conceptions of social justice. So we see something on uh, roles, of course. You can do social and political philosophy without touching roles. Questions such as whether the state has the right to tax citizens for the welfare of others will be explored. I have worked hard. I have my money. Can we say you want to take your tax to the others who don't have benefit. I, I, I shudder at what John Hospice would say to that. And I'll look at what some so-called you know, feminist thinkers would, would say to that. And these have implications on politics, society, etc., etc. So generally, it will be. And so on the screen, you have our course objectives that I'm sure you can read through yourself. The course outline is already uploaded. What is the object of our discussion? The goal. Objects are our objectives are more measurable, but the goal is ultimately there. But I want to take you to the outcomes, what I want you to have learned and become the outcome, you see. I, I hope that by the time we finish the course, first, you, the student, can express your view and your thoughts clearly about issues of philosophical importance in the field of social and political philosophy, at least in the areas that we have outlined. Should be able to express it. You should be able to critically examine arguments. I'm talking about critically examining, not just critically following, but critically examining it, open it out, to show its implications, its pros and cons, and then what it it doesn't see that it is seeing, but it might be seeing. You know, you're examining what arguments and the justifications that are offered for certain things. You should be able to political ideologies, theories, and concepts. And third, you should be able to, after the course, what 
outcome will be, which is useful for every field of endeavor. That is what I'm teaching at the tertiary, tertiary level six to do, to make you a material that is employable and, and a material that can employ others. Create, you can create, you can evaluate, you can examine. That is the high level kind of training we hope we are able to give. So third, we want you to be able to account for and analyze context in social and political processes, such as social justice, political legitimacy, and examine the different perspectives together. Hopefully you'll be able to create responses, create solutions that will profile well for everyone. Okay. A method of instruction Method of instruction. This course will be a mixture of lecture, class discussion, small group work, student presentations, library work, and general research. Take note of each one of them. For each topic, core issues, including the main argument, key terms and concepts, and their definitions and explanations will be presented. Now, you would need to do your reading ahead. Please, when you go read through the course outline, the end. Read ahead and prepare a one page critical summary for each topic so that you can engage discussions when they come up. Okay. Now, assessment and grading for your final exam, you will do 50%. Exam in person, you will come to the exam hall and collect answer booklet. God will you be alive and write essays. Okay, that will come from 50%. For your continuous assessment, you do an interim assessment 20%. You will come to the exam hall and write, collect answer booklet and write for the 20%. The take home, we will look at it. I suppose you will be present in class and I come and work on it. The group presentations, you do them together. Class participation will count for 10 marks. I'm sure you understand what that means for better times. Your essays will be graded in terms of your ability to demonstrate an in-depth understanding of the theories and ideas that have been covered in the course. You have to exhibit clarity of expression at level 300 for one gloss of average. And you have to be organized in the way you are presenting those ideas. And you have to give us an evidence of critical ability. You don't have to be an Einstein none of us is, but you have to show that you are critiquing. The taking doesn't mean find something negative. No, you are critically opening out concept. That is what we need you to do. Attendance is expected. The rest you should read. I expect you to arrive in class not later than 10 minutes. We will try and be as human as we can about these things. But these are all meant to help you start right and end right. Okay, so it's not just the rules that we want to give, but if we are guided by that, then help. There will always be a human face to these matters. Okay, you are expected to keep written notes. I just need to remind you of that. If you would be absent, it is good if you send us a prompt, but you will still be responsible for the content that has been delivered. We do not have an automatic makeup for any assessment that has not been done or you miss a deadline it won't be automatic if it is proven medical grounds you know whether in this is to that okay but where oh no please I, I overslept and i mean i get i get those a lot and students will be anxious unfortunately there won't be such if it is in person i you take it in person you miss it you have missed it Please, let's get that. Don't say, oh, please, please. I, I want to do it online. I can do it with you. If we wanted it online, off-site, we would have done that. So half of the class or 90% uh, of the class will not come and sit in person and write out what they have learned. And 10% want it online. That will not be a fair system of reading. So let's understand from now, as they would have been if we were doing in the past, our full 12 weeks. Nobody comes to the lecturer's office after an eye has been written and says, please give me another person, let me do it here. It is not allowed. It's unless there is a, a university prescribed exception. And for that, they will make room. Okay. So 
to the end or the other ones are there. Plagiarism, I leave it on the screen. You can take a snapshot and read it into details. Take note in presentations, assignments, tests. I'm sure <laughs> folks know that they won't try that with my help. All right, these are the minimum required readings. We try not to make them too many, but I put as many as I can together in a compiled reading for you. And like I said, I communicated on the WhatsApp platforms, so you pick a copy when they are ready. So the other two, they are soft, they are accessible freely. So I've given, as I find them, I'll, I'll just be uploading those things that are readings that are soft. You don't have to carry them on your shoulder. But the other that may, may not be many, when we find them, then we get the permission to run for it. All right. So um, now, this is a breakdown. I've almost elaborated on each one. So I'll just show you. Take note. Lecture topics and readings for the blended mode of delivery. We'll study in a blended mode. In person, class, online. Both are composed. They are not optional. In person, especially, is for us to have interactions, really, without the restriction of having to type, you know, the network went down and all that. But the online will deliver lectures, will take feedbacks, will have interactive sessions, and will keep them recorded for those who, for some reason, cannot do. But make it a point that if you can, you will. Don't hide behind the excuse, because in the long run, it is you. Will benefit. Okay, so introductory matters. I've tried to put as much as I can in the introductory matters for you here. So it's of our time. Now the topic lectures one, two, three. See, I didn't put weeks. Didn't put weeks because we don't have three weeks to do this. But we have we can do lectures, maybe recorded videos or an interactive time. And the part that I think we can excuse me, we can spend time on. Online, we can do that. So we may do hops, touch on lock a bit, then come to Uzo, and then we deliver the summarized content on it in terms of video lectures or whatever. All will come from how you, the class, engage the content. I will not spoon feed, but I will be as open, accessible, and helpful. So we can do this together and be well equipped. So lectures one to three could be covered in a, in a, in a day session. If the students have done their homework, like I already sent you, these are all seminar things. You Google Thomas Hobbes in the Bible, you will get the content straightforward. It's not something that you have to go look for the original 1870, whatever text. Just go to get Thomas Hobbes. What is he say? What question are you looking for? As a philosophy, it's a philosophical treatment of the content, not political science. So the authority of the state or government is what we are interrogating philosophically. First, get to know what Hobbes says, what does Locke say, and how does Rousseau reconcile the two, or what does he bring to the table? You see, then now, when we meet and we are discussing, it, it, it will connect. You see, perhaps there's something that these two are saying together, or are they really disagreeing or not, or what have you? That will be the first three lectures. The next one will now look at the relation of ideas in matters of fact, excuse me, that wasn't part of what we are doing. Examining the relation between the individual and human society, I got a bit distracted. Okay. Taylor and Miles, those two readings should do some good job for you on that. And then the third set of lectures would want to know, should I obey the state? Should I obey the state? You see? And then we'll look at Plato's crypto. We'll look at Martin Luther King, and then for me. And finally, I hope there is time so we can cover these two. These ones are more uh, research papers that we will do together. So you do the reading and bring it to class. But I will engage John Rawls with you, his theory of justice. And as for Marx, our Marxist Communist Manifesto and, and Hospice uh, Libertarian Manifesto, one debate session in 40, 50 minutes you should be able to clear that. So maybe a good two and four will take Karl Marx and then uh, six and seven will take a uh, hospice. And then you, you will read and come and engage the class together. We we'll just go on. But that is, we'll be discussing socioeconomic justice and the distribution of resources. That is how come you can situate 
Rawls's theory of justice, justice as being fair, not treating people equally. We, we understand that. So if you treat people equally, then the pregnant woman who entered the bank and hall should go and join the queue. See, that's equal treatment. But Rose's argument ultimately says no, treat them fairly. So there are certain disadvantages that people already start with naturally, balance it. So we open that out a bit more. And you see the affirmative action and all those things. Some ladies are in school, some people come from some faraway place like my hometown. So they agreed it wasn't true because a car comes to the city once in a year. <laughs> And they don't have access to electricity or whatever. So if such a person is able to make an adverse sex, and you with Accra, Central Accra, with all the facilities available, make an adverse sex also, then if you're not careful, the affirmative action for ladies or you know trying to be fair, that other person may have a access to the medical school, maybe admitted and you wouldn't. And it is coming from wrong. Right, so we will look at all the things that we need to do. I think it's a rich text that uh, affects you positively. And then we'll wrap up with the concept and practice of democracy. We will try to give um, an African tone to everything we've done. Look at Kwame Jechi's view of democracy mm -hmm. and, and reconcile it with what we think we are doing now. It will just be you like an icing on the cake to put everything together. And if we, we are we, we should do these things together, we will be okay for the semester. You can see that our plate is full, but we should bite big big and drink a lot of water and we'll clear up everything in a good time. I wish you well. Take care and keep your eyes on Sakai and notices from there. So you are always abreast with what is happening in the course officially from your lecture, just truly, and not get agitated or anxious unnecessarily. You will do fine. Take care of the best. <laughs>